Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. For behold, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. How many of you are glad for the first day of spring? Welcome spring, yay. All sure, you're all clapping now. See, on the staff, we have this ongoing conversation because I love winter. I love everything about winter. It has Christmas, it has New Year's, it has Ash Wednesday, it has snow, lots and lots of snow. And someone else on the staff whose name shall not be mentioned, but is Leah Woods, always likes spring and summer and the heat and all that. So the day of Jim has left today and the day of Leah has come, and so now it's Leah's season. But uh, it is good to be in the house of the Lord and out in His sanctuary, isn't it? As you walked, did you know you were in his sanctuary when you left the house? That's God's sanctuary too. Welcome to Trinity United Methodist Church on this first day of spring, March 20th, 2022. And welcome not only to those of you in the house, but those of you on uh, the internet, watching the live stream. We're glad to have you with us today. If you're in the building, would you please sign the attendance pads? Let us know if there's anything we can do to be of help. And certainly if there's any information change, we are getting ready to baptize folks in a month or two, and we're going to be welcoming new members. If you'd like to become a part of our church family by confessing your faith in Jesus Christ, we would love to have you, and we would like you to be part of our church family as well. If you look at the white insert, if you have the bulletin, look at the back page, and it says, This Week at Trinity. It's another great week here. This evening, the young adults and the youth group both meet at 6 o'clock. On Tuesday, our church council meets. We're doing that by Zoom still uh, so that everyone can be there. You don't have to be a member of the council. You don't even have to be a member of the church to attend. If you'd like an invitation, just contact me or the office. We would love to have you. It's a great place for us to support one another, hear about the ministries going on in the church, and to help each other do that. Wednesdays, we're doing a hybrid Bible study. It's off to a great start where you can be both in the building or on Zoom, and each can hear all of the others. we are worked out some technical issues, and it's going well. So if you would like to be with us, we would love to have you this week. Thursday nights is always music rehearsal night, and uh, this coming Friday, the youth have a lock-in. They've been wanting to have a lock-in for two years, and they can finally have one now starting Friday night going into Saturday morning. Please note that there will be a prayer time later in this service when you can share your prayers, or if you're at home, you can email them to me right now at the address on the screen, Pastor Jim at trinityumchurch.org, or if you're in the building and don't want to stand up and speak, you can email them to me and I'll read them for you here. But we will have a time of prayer coming up shortly this morning. Isn't it good to be in God's house? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and welcome to worship. Let's turn our hearts now from all that has occupied us over the past week, and let's turn our hearts and our spirits to Christ now. It's okay. Oh my goodness. That's very, oh wow, that's very generous of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Good morning. That's fine. Good morning. Please rise as you're able and join in our call to worship. 
Wrap yourselves in the healing love of God. We, we seek, seek God's, God's presence, presence in our, our lives. lives. Know that God continually surrounds us with patience and persistence. Even though we have not produced the fruits of hope that God seeks, yet God forgives and heals our weakness. Rejoice, great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. We will turn our lives again to the Lord to serve and seek God's presence. Amen. Please remain standing for our first hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, number 127. Please join me in our profession of our acclamation of faith, the Apostles' Creed traditional version. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, and we'll have children's time with Miss Stacy. like everybody. So um, basically, if Simon says to do something, you do it. But if Simon doesn't say to do it, you don't do it. Pretty simple. So let's test this out, and we'll see how good of a listener you are. So Simon says, raise your hand. Simon says, raise your other hand. OK, put your hands down. Oh, I got some of you. <laughs> so <laughs> Simon didn't say, put your hands down. OK, let's try again. Touch your nose. Touch your ear. Pull on your ear. Oh, I didn't get as many people that time. OK, we're done. You, <laughs> you can relax. <laughs> OK, so in the game of Simon Says, we do what Simon says to do. But in real life, we should do what the Bible says to do. Did you know that the devil will try to trick you into doing what he wants you to do? Hmm. The Bible says, thou shalt not steal. But if you go to the store and buy something, and the cashier gives you too much money back, the devil will try to get you to keep it. Hmm. He'll say, that isn't stealing. She gave me that money. But if we take something that doesn't belong to us, that is stealing. Mm. The Bible says, love your enemies. But when someone hurts you, the devil will say, hurt them back. They hurt you first. Mm. 
The Bible says thou shalt not lie, but when you accidentally break your mother's vase and she asks if you know how it got broken, <laughs> the devil will say, don't tell the truth, because if you tell the truth, you're going to get in more trouble. So the devil even tried to get Jesus to do things that were wrong. Do you know, that, do you know what Jesus did? Jesus answered with scripture. That's a good way to defeat the devil, isn't it? Just read the Bible and do what the Bible tells you to do. So please pray with me. Dear God, help us to do what Jesus did. Help us do what the Bible tells us to do instead of listening to what the devil wants us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Today's gospel reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. It can be found on page 872 in your pew Bible. There were some present at that very time who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, Do you think that these Galatians were worse sinners than all the other Galatians because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, Look, for three years now I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around and put on manure. Then if it should bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you're able and join in our next hymn, In the Cross of Christ I Glory, verses 1, 2, and 4. You may be seated. Our uh, sermon text this morning is from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the first 13 verses. Please attend to this, the word of God. Friends, I want to remind you that all of our ancestors walked under the cloud and went through the sea. This was like being baptized and becoming followers of Moses. All of them also ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink which flowed from the spiritual rock that followed them. That rock was Christ. But most of them did not please God, so they died and their bodies were scattered all over the desert. What happened to them is a warning to keep us from wanting to do the same evil things. They worshipped idols, just as the scriptures say. The people sat down to eat and drink and when they got up to dance around, so don't worship idols. Some of those people did shameful things, and in a single day, about 23,000 of them died. Don't do shameful things as they did. And don't try to test Christ, as some of them did, and were later bitten by poisonous snakes. Don't even grumble, as some of them did, and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as a warning to us. All this was written in the scripture to teach us who live in these days. Even if you think you can stand up to temptation, be careful not to fall. You are tempted in the same way that everyone is tempted, but God can be trusted not to let you be tempted too much, and he will show you how to escape from your temptations. Let us pray. Lord of all, I ask that you, you seize me and Give me words to say that speak your words and touch 
your people's hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be familiar with this uh, experience. You go online, you make an online purchase, or you go to a hotel website and make a reservation, or even just visit a website, and immediately your email account becomes inundated with a barrage of emails from that very vendor with whom you were just dealing. And you also start seeing pop-up ads all over your screen for the very product or service that you looked for. It's advertising at its most focused and most intrusive. Even if you went casually to a website just to browse around, non-specific search for an upcoming possible birthday gift for someone, there's a pretty good chance that you'll start seeing ad ads popping up on your screen for the very things that you were looking at. They figure if you looked at them once, you're interested. And so if they dangle them in front of you, just maybe you'll bite. Fortunately, there's at least for some relief for this because uh, if the email that comes, usually you can go down to the bottom of that email and find a little line that says unsubscribe and you can shake that particular uh, email chain. It's a little bit of a pain in the neck to do this for all the emails you might be getting, but it's often better than being buried under all these emails and having all of them in your inbox for their latest product or their upcoming sale. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it just be great if uh, we had an unsubscribe option for temptation? I mean, we're all subject to temptation, Paul tells us in this text, and somehow those things that tempt us seem to be appearing, continually appearing, low-hanging fruit, ready and easily available. I'd love to be able to unsubscribe from those things which tempt me. Both Ash Wednesday and the first Sunday of Lent, Pastor Jim preached on the temptation story of Jesus where Jesus was tempted by the devil after having fasted for 40 days. Now, these temptations were very specific to Jesus. They weren't just random or things that just came up or popped up or last-minute thoughts. These were very specific to Jesus, who he was, and where he was. And that's the way it is with temptation, isn't it? But they were specific to Jesus to, sit, to tempt him to hurry up. Claim your status. Don't go through all this stuff that God has planned for you. We can just skip through all that, and you can be the Messiah without really trying very hard. It was an invitation to claim the power he already clearly possessed or to demonstrate who he was in a grandiose and attention-grabbing manner. Each, each temptation seemed to be something that could help Jesus. He'd been fasting for 40 days. The temptation was to turn stones into bread. Well, you know, that'd be temptation if you hadn't eaten in 40 days. To f a good thing to be fed, thank you so. Or take him and show him all the kingdoms of the world and say, I can give you this. I can give you all of this. You, don't, you want to be the Messiah? I can make you king of all the kingdoms of the world. Or take him up to the top of the temple and say, you want to convince people you're the Messiah? Jump off of here, land on your feet, do a little ta-da, and we've uh, convinced them who you are and what you can do. They sounded just like what the doctor ordered. But the problem with each temptation, the problem Jesus saw each time was that it varied from God's plan and it took him farther, not nearer, but farther from the path that God had set for him. We're all familiar with temptation, whether it's a seemingly innocent temptation, you know, that late night bowl of ice cream that you probably shouldn't have, or uh, that particularly delicious looking cake in the fellowship time we just started having again, uh, you know, and... Uh, well, I shouldn't eat that. I already had breakfast, but gee, it looks so good, you know. 
or uh, the temptation to spend too much time at work playing solitaire on your computer instead of working on your computer. And then there are, of course, little heavier temptations, more obviously negative temptations, such as to drink to excess or to take drugs or to look at that pornographic video or flirt with that attractive friend. Temptations. They surround us. They're all around us. All of us, they create a personal wilderness that can very easily isolate us from each other sometimes and close off our openness to God himself. But if temptation is so universal and it's been around forever, surely we found a way to deal with it. Surely we know how to handle that. We can unsubscribe by now from the temptations. At some level, for some temptations, we have kind of learned just not to give in, to keep up the good fight. Sometimes we've learned to use resources that are available to us. That's what Alcoholics Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous uh, you know, that's, that's their whole program, is that you're not in this alone. You know, there, you know, there's a higher power. They, that's what they, you know, they bring God into the mix. They say, no, we're here for you. There's somebody that cares. They've been through much the same thing you're going through, and here's somebody that cares. We'll help you with that. We have meetings. We can provide structure and testimony and, and perhaps inspiration to you. You're not in this alone. But always, the temptation is there looking for moments of weakness, moments of vulnerability, searching for a ways around or over or through all our defenses. So we need to hear the verse from 1 Corinthians. This particular part of, uh, was, was taken from the New Revised Standard. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful. And he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. Now, in this passage, Paul has been writing about the Hebrew exodus from Egypt. Those, those years in which they wandered in the wilderness. And he stresses that God helped them and was with them and helps them find a way out. Paul may have had particular temptations in mind. He's, he's after all, writing his first letter to the Corinthians, that church, he's already re reprimanded and warned about idolatry, about qu quarreling among themselves, about sexual immorality. But even if he has specific temptations in mind, the point is general. Whatever the wilderness of temptation holds for us, it can be thought of as a test, a test of strength, and God has prepared a way out. It is possible not to yield. Hear that. We can win the struggle. Uh, I read of a study in which 60 college students were told to respond to the temptation to eat candy by saying, I can't do that. And then they were exposed to opportunities to eat candy, and they were supposed to say, I can't do that. I can't do it. Then another group of 60 students with the, you know, with the same temptation were told to say, I don't do that. I don't do that. Then, of course, they were just given opportunities to eat candy. Not a bad study, was it? No, not a bad no. Given opportunities to eat candy. And they dutifully said, I can't do that. I can't do it. Or I don't do it. I don't do it. And then the, they thought the study was over. And they were offered a complimentary treat. Either a choice of either a candy bar or a granola bar. The researchers noted that of the students who had been trained to say, I can't do that. 60% chose the candy bar at the end of the, the study. Of the students who had been taught to say, I don't do that, only 36% chose the candy bar. 
it suggests that, you know, how we say no can make a difference. It, cha- you know, it can change the way we respond. Maybe I can't is an expression of weakness, uh, an acknowledgement of our limitations, and makes us more vulnerable to temptation. Perhaps I don't underscores our power to choose. It's our choice, and we don't do that. And it empowers us. In the great hymn, A Mighty Fortress, there's a reference to one little word. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fell him. Martin Luther, the the author, poet of of that hymn, said, said the one little word is you lie. Now, I know that's two words. Maybe it's one word in German. I don't know if anybody here knows that or not, or Latin or something else, or maybe he was actually saying, liar. But in any case, he's commenting on the fact that Satan can't stand if we know he's a liar. He's not confined to the truth when tempting us. The pleasure and advantage offered by temptation is probably not reality. Whatever truth there might be is probably not the whole truth. The promised temptation is not going to taste as good or feel as good as advertised. And the pleasure it promises almost certainly ignores the almost certain consequences of giving in to temptation. You lie is not a bad response to being tempted. I don't do that. Not bad either. Henri Nouwen tells the story about one of the desert fathers, people who went into the wilderness to, to, to live in isolation as kind of, kind of hermits, but they did it as a way of being devoted to God. And this one particular man took, took residence in, a, in a, an abandoned temple, not necessarily a Christian place, but he was sleeping on a bed of palm leaves. So only comfort was whatever comfort that bed would provide. And some demons came into the temple and they told him to leave, claiming the temple belonged to them. And the man refused to leave and he told the demons, no place belongs to you. So the demons began to scatter his palm leaves, his precious bed, and scatter them all around one by one. But the old man kept picking them back up and putting them back where they belonged. Finally, the demon grabbed him by the wrist and dragged him to the door. And as he got to the door, he grabbed the temple or the lintel of the door. And he hung on being stretched out, pulled in one direction and wanting to pull in the other. And finally, in his desperation, he said, Jesus, save me. And the devil let go. And he was left in the silence of the temple. And in that silence, he began to weep. And the Lord appeared to him and asked him, why Why are you crying? And the man answered, because the devils have dared to enter this place and seize a man like me. And the Lord replied, well, you'd been careless. As soon as you turned to me again, I was there with you. No one comments that the most significant encounters with Christ, they don't come before the, the crisis. They don't come after the crisis. They don't come beyond, outside the crisis. They come right in the middle of the crisis. Christ comes to us in the crisis and says, as soon as you t- turn to me again, you knew I was beside you. A parishioner of mine once told me this story. It's a very similar story to the one that now I'm uh, relayed, and it says, as a young woman, she and a friend heard about a place where there were, was Satan worship taking place. So, you know, and uh, in youthful enthusiasm and curiosity and mischief, they decided they were going to go you know, and see what was happening. But they no more than got in the place, and they got this real sense that they didn't belong there, that they, they, this real sense of, that they were surrounded by evil And so she got up 
and went to the door to open the door and, and to leave and found it locked or stuck or something because it wouldn't open. And she pushed on the door and she pulled on the door and she pounded on the door, creating quite a stir, by the way, amongst these Satan worshipers that had gathered. And uh, the more attention she got, the more frightened she got, and the more she pounded on the door and the stubborner the door was, and it just wasn't moving. And finally, in fear, in fear, she shouted, in the name of Jesus Christ, open! And the door opened. And she fled with her friend, never to return again. Christ in the crisis. That's the promise. We're not in this alone. No matter how great the temptation, no matter how strong the trial, we're not in this alone. We can't unsubscribe from being tempted, but we can subscribe to the help of the Lord. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, it is a privilege to be your people and to know it. It is a privilege to be able to turn to you and say, help me, and to know you'll help. We thank you, Lord, for your presence with us, for your caring for us, for your listening to us as, as we face a world of temptation. In Jesus' name, amen. Although we don't pass offering plates anymore, we always have a time in our worship service when we remember the joy of giving. I don't know about you, but my family and I rejoice that we have something to give. Did you, have you ever done that? I'm just grateful, God, that I have something to give because I remember a time when I did not. And so uh, when we bring our tithes or offerings to the sanctuary and we put them in one of the black boxes or... For those of you who give electronically now, since the beginning of the pandemic, the electronic giving for this church has almost tripled. So many, many people are finding that to be a helpful way of giving. However we give, uh, thanks be to God that he taught us just as he's a giver, he teaches us to be givers too. And so we're thankful for those of you who support the ministry and make it possible for us to serve God in this place and around the world. Let's spend some time praying together this morning too and opening ourselves to one another. If you have the white insert and open it to the middle like this, look on the left panel. Uh, there's some prayer notes there that we'll lift up and I'll add a couple for you. Lynn Hayden, who normally attends the AM service, Lynn was at Calvert Health Medical Center most of this week, uh, did very well, got discharged on Thursday, and is home. I talked with her yesterday. She's doing well, but she's still a little weak and continuing her treatment, um, but got great care at the hospital, and so we're grateful for that, and uh, we're grateful for Lynn as well. Not listed there, I would ask you to remember two families. Uh, for those of you that know or love the Chick Mettler family, uh, Jen Curran, his daughter, uh, I led a service Friday morning for his family as they committed his ashes to its resting place. So remember Donna, his wife, Jen, his uh, daughter, and the rest of their family, if you would. And later that evening, Friday evening, Reverend Rob led a service for the Kincaid family, Jeannie Kincaid, who had a connection to Trinity many years ago. Uh, she died recently. And Reverend Rob led a service on Friday evening in her memory. If you'll remember her husband, Jim, Jim Kincaid, as he grieves, please remember him if you would. We uh, already have something from email today. Um, Gloria Hawkins asks us to remember uh, Morris. Morris Hawkins, who normally attends this service, he still has an infection, will need surgery again on his foot and was in the emergency room all night, Gloria says. Um, we uh, lift that up to the Lord. Uh, I am told by the booth that our live stream is not working this morning either, so sorry about that. 
but uh, so I don't have to worry about. She knew to email anyway. <laughs> she she knew to uh, to send something to me. But let me open it to you. What who has something on their hearts? Uh, let's start with needs or concerns, if you would. Yes, sir. Tuesday is mom and dad's anniversary. Great. How many years, mom? 53. That's a great start. That's awesome. For your 53rd anniversary, we thank the Lord for you and Jimmy and your home. Praise God for you. Yes, ma'am. Is this Rebecca? Rebecca. <laughs> for niece Rebecca, who's being deployed to Asia. We pray to the Lord for her. She's in the armed forces, right? Air Force, yep. For, uh, for Rebecca, as she is deployed. We pray to the Lord for her. What other needs or concerns? Yes, ma'am. Okay. For Leo, a nephew who's going to have a liver transplant, and is it Austin, Texas? Okay. Uh, we pray to the Lord for him and for the process that's about to come. Any others? How, uh, yes, sir. Yes. Amen. For a third anniversary sober. How about that? Praise God. Praise God. Absolutely. We thank God for you and for his presence with you. You bet something to celebrate today. Any other needs or concerns? Let's uh, talk about joys and celebrations. I'm sorry, somebody has a... Yes, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Okay. For uh, being healed of smoking. That's awesome. Stopping smoking. That's great. Praise God for you. What other good things can we celebrate today? Anything good happen anywhere, anytime to anybody? Yes, sir. I had a uh, doctor's appointment this week of, with my urologist about the uh, prostate cancer that I, I uh, had treated last fall. And uh, in his words, he says, everything's looking good. So, uh, <laughs> Praise God. So, Praise the Lord so for I, healing. I celebrate that. Also, just another joy, my granddaughter's with us today. Uh, Hello. Yeah, yeah. What's her name? Cora. Cora. Hi, Cora. Mm -hmm. Glad to have mm -hmm. you with us. It's good to have Cora in the house. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome. Praise God. What are the good things can you think of? Anything else good that God has done? Nothing. Well, what a sad group. What a sad, <laughs> sad group. Yes. Yes, we have some young people home from college, I guess, for spring break, maybe, or something like that. Uh, the Bush boys, Jacob and Josh, are here. We're glad to see you. And uh, for all the young people who are back, uh, love visiting with them. That's awesome. Yes, ma'am. Yes, it's, it's uh, absolutely, it's a beautiful day, it's spring is the season of Leah, and uh, all is well, so uh, I did remind Leah before the service today that this Friday is only nine months till Christmas, so she liked that, that, uh, that brought a special smile to her face, didn't it, Leah, she, she did that, what she's doing right now, that's what she did earlier when I reminded her of that, yes, ma'am, Mary. Okay, for a neighbor who's from Ukraine and has family there, um, for those in the Ukraine who are being besieged right now, especially we pray to the Lord for them and cry out to God to help them. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am.
Okay. 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 Mm-hmm. For a niece and a nephew. Yeah, yeah. We we thank God for them and ask for God's direction of them. Andrew? Yes, hopefully not. No, no, no. Hopefully they'll do better. Absolutely. Pray for a good deployment and a good experience there and God's protection. Any other good things, praises, or thanksgivings this morning? Anybody else? If not, are you ready to pray? Let's pray. We lift our hearts to you, O God, because you're the one who made this beautiful day. You're the one who created heaven and earth. You made us in your image, and you made our neighbors and friends Lord, we cry out to you, especially as the war in Ukraine continues and as the tragedies unfold there, we pray for you, O God, to intervene and to use whatever you need, Lord, to bring peace and healing there. Lord, we thank you for the things that have been shared this morning. Some of them involve great struggle or pain or hurt. But in the midst of all of them, God, even there, you, Lord, are still our strength and our Redeemer. Hear your people now as we lift up our hearts to you with glad and joyous songs and prayers, remembering the prayer which you taught us to pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you're able, please stand as we sing doxology. Heavenly Father, forgive us when we doubt your goodness to us. Mm. Remind us of your loving ways that bring us joy in living. Yes. Move us to live in service to others. Allow these gifts to carry forward your word and love to all in need. Amen. Amen. And please join in our closing hymn, O Jesus, I Have Promised, verses 1, 2, and 4, number 396.
The altar is open. Maybe just by God's grace that you've been struggling with the temptation. Maybe that's what you'd like to talk about today. Maybe there's some other issue on your mind. Uh, I'm here to listen, and uh, I'll, I'll be here at the altar for a few minutes. I can, uh, we can anoint for healing. We can uh, pray together. So uh, feel, feel free to come and, and spend a moment with me, if you will. And, uh, but as you go... And sooner we're, or later, we're all going from this place. As you go, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.